Hello. The other day I needed to make some text animations and I found a website uh, that explains some of it that had just been made, a, a new blog post um, that told me a bunch of stuff I didn't know and I thought it would be good to have, an, uh, have it in a way that other people could find more easily too. Um, so anyway, I made this slideshow which I will reference um, in the description. Um, and here is the website where I found some of these helpful things. Um, thank you, Steve Streeting. So anyway, let's say you want to make some animated text effects inside a widget. Well, you're going to need a widget. So let's make a widget blueprint. And if you go into here, uh, you'll see this thing called the rich text, rich text block, right? So if you type in it, uh, you'll notice it looks kind of weird, right? It's purple um, because you need a text style set. So what is that? Well, we go here and let's make a miscellaneous data table. And if you look in here, you'll find a rich text style row. So, so let's just save all that and we can go back into here and we can select that asset and it will still look like garbage. Um, so if you go in here, uh, let's create a new row and you'll see there's all these cool parameters you can set. Um, and the first row you want to name default. Um, and let's select a font. Let's turn on engine content so we can select the default font, Roboto. Um, and let's make it blue instead just for fun here, right? So if we save that and we compile here, there we go. Now we have our hello. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? We got a way to set color. We can set the font. We can set the spacing. Um, and you'll notice this font material, which is interesting. We have outline settings. Um, just lots of stuff that you can do um, to mix different textiles within here. So you might say, well, what, what happens if I didn't name this default? Let's name it something else. When we compile here, it can't find it because it uses the default text for any text here that you type that has no markup. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we put default back, compile, there it is. Go into here, if we make a new row, let's type this one as bold. Actually, wait, let's delete this row and we'll duplicate this one. There we go, now, bold. And if we go down here, we'll go Roboto Bold, and let's change this one to red instead. Okay. So now in this text here, we can use the markup, which is the little thing like that, and you say what you what row you want to use, and then you use the close markup like that. So you'll see that's what you want to type, and then when you compile it, if you did it correctly, you will see the color like that, right? Pretty cool. So. That works out great. Um, here's something I noticed. Let's say you wanted bold to continue on to the next line. So you hit shift enter here. You're on the next line, right? You'll see it does not parse across line uh, line breaks. So you have to close your parsing and then you'd have to do something like next line. Like that, right? Okay. All right, so that's a way that you can make text that looks different within one text block. So let's say, you know, you have health or, um, you know, you want to highlight some portion of this text, but you want to be able to do it without breaking it up into a bunch of text blocks. Um, you could do it this way. Um, but the next cool thing you can do with this is this font material. So let's make a material. We'll call it um, font. And if we go in here into our material domain, let's set it to user interface. So you can see we just have a final color and screen position now. Um, and let's put a vertex color as our color. And type position, which will get you world position, as your position. Okay. Now if we save that, we go into here, let's make a new roll, row we'll call this uh, effect and 
choose Roboto, regular, 30. Let's set the color, let's leave the color pink like that, I suppose. Um, and then let's set our material. So I'm going to turn off the engine content now. There we go. So there's our font. So now if we go in here, on another line, we can say effect. And then when we compile, there we go. So you can see the color went came through correctly. So the color that's being set here goes into vertex color. The position is the world position, which seems very strange. Um, but it believe me, it's the case. Um, so now that we have this, you can do cool stuff. Uh, um, for example, what if we want to move the text up and down? Well, we could use a sine wave to do that, right? So let's create a sine. Let's multiply the output by an amplitude, because otherwise it's going to be pretty small. Let's set that to 10. And then here, we'll add it to the world position, right? And I think we want to make a float 3 because we just want the y, which is, you know, x is across, y is up and down in 2D here. So if we just add this to y, we'll be good. So let's get time to drive the sine wave. And you can see our little blocks moving. If we look in here, our effects moving, right? Pretty cool. So now you got something moving up and down. And we could add a parameter for the rate. You know, how fast time is moving, like this. So we can set that to 2, let's say. You can see it's moving twice as fast. Um, cool. Um, but uh, let's see, that's not enough. Let's say we want to make a wave along the thing, right? Well, we could offset what's inside this sign here. So we can take a texture coordinate. And here's where some confusing things happen. So the texture coordinate uh, 0, if we put it in final color, uh, well, Hold on, we gotta change the color here to white so that we can see everything pass through properly. Okay, if we do that, you'll see, um, as usual, the UV space goes from zero to one across here and zero to one across there. So it's like the top left corner is zero and down here is one in Y and one in X, right? So U of one, V of one, down here. Um, so you would think you could just use texture coordinate zero. Um, so let's use the red channel of it. So just as it goes across X, um, and we'll add that to this. And we'll put vertex color back in there. There we go. You can see it's waving, but it's a bit odd. It's not exactly what I expected. Um, if you use texture coordinate one, on the other hand, you will get what you expect. So it's like what's in the pixel uh, shader going into final color is different than what is in the UV or this, you know, the vertex shader. So use texture coordinate one um, if you want UV space across the text. Um, and it will be across um, this section, right? So if I did that then you'll see like W and A are moving <laughs> at the exact same speed because they're in their own sections. So uh, that's kind of interesting. If you want an effect to, you know, the, if you want the UV space to just be one letter, you could do it this way. Um, but otherwise, the UV space will be this in, inside the entire markup. So that's pretty cool if you want to make wavy text. So we've made moving text, uh, wavy text. Um, let's make uh, growing and shrinking text for our final 
um, little trick here. Um, so let's just delete this stuff. Um, so if we want to grow and shrink, let's see, our world position, we really kind of only need to add to an X and Y, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and switch that to there. Um, so if we take our texture coordinate, texture coordinate 1, right? And then we, we uh, get the um, X channel, UV, U channel, and we subtract an offset from it. Let's just set that to 0.5. The maximum of that can be 0 to 1, right? So if we preview that, you can see now, so our UV space, instead of going 0 to 1 here, is now going 0 to minus a half, 0 to 1 half, right? So what I like to do here is renormalize it. So we take 1 minus that, and then we take 1 divided by that, and then we can multiply this by that new number, and we have renormalized it. Um, now it goes 0 to minus 1 and 0 to 1 this way, right? Um, because 1 half minus a half is a half. <laughs> 1 divided by a half is 2, so it multiplies uh, these where they were 1 half, they now become 1. Um, but this also works if you used a different number, like if we offset it by 0.25, let's say. Then in that case, 1 minus 0.25 would be 0.75. 1 over 0.75 is like 1.33. Multiplying that by um, 0.75 by 1.33 uh, gets you back to 1 here at the edge. So I want to keep these things normalized. Makes more sense. Okay, so now we've got the X channel. Let's do the same thing in Y, basically. Right. So to do that, we would just switch this to G. And we want to make this Y offset in case there's some reason to have them different. If we preview this, you can see it's now right 0 in the middle to minus 1, 0 here, go to a 1 there. And if we append these, we can turn them back into a vector 2. Right? Yeah. So you can see there's the center of the UV space now. Um, Okay, so that's basically saying in the center of our text, we have zero. And then as you get away, you have larger values, right? So if we take our time and our sign and our amp, um, well, here's a little trick. So the sign's going to go negative one to one, right? So if we want to just go away and then back, but not inverse, what I mean is like we don't want to shrink it so that it folds over itself. We don't want to go to negative 1. We want to just go to 0 to 1. So we need to add 1 to sign, right, which will make its negative 1. It'll go from 0 to 2 now. Then we divide by 2. So now it just goes from 0 to 1 over time, right? Now let's multiply by our amplitude. Right. Let's set that to 10 so it's easy to see. Multiply this guy, right? And now we can add it. And it looks like it's just moving back and forth, doesn't it? Go back here. You will see we're growing and shrinking from the center, um, which is what we wanted. It's kind of like a breathing effect or something. Um, let's make it bigger, you know. There you go. Cool, huh? I like because it, it's so smooth. Um, it affects the actual like uh, vertices of the letters, you know, in a way, if you can think of it that way. Um, but you can see here, it would be the edge of the widget would be this green line here, and this would be clipped out. So you would have to add some padding um, to make this make sense, um, you know, or move it some, like, right? This way, when it grows outside of the rich text block, it's not actually being clipped off. All right, so that's how you do wavy, grow, shrink, um, and just general move. Um, 
And then one last thing I wanted to say was you can also hide uh, parts of the text. So let's call this one, I'll just make it something very simple, hi, right? Um, well, let me, let me duplicate default. There we go, hi. So if, if we want to, let's say, write in the text over time, then you could use this hide to hide part of the text as it writes in so that it stays the right size, assuming all your fonts are the same size and the same type. Um, yeah, so you can just set the color here to zero alpha, right? And now anything we surround with HI will disappear. So if we go back to here, we could say, um, all right, there's a new default hidden one. And if we do HI, and boop, now it's hidden, but it holds the same space, you see? So what you could do would be to iterate programmatically through each letter and then move where the markup for hidden was so that it looked like it was writing in one at a time. Um, the only trouble you'd have is if you have line breaks, you'd have to close and reopen your hidden markup around them, um, which would be a pain, but that's one way to do it. Um, anyway, I hope this uh, helped bring some understanding to how to make your own text effects. And I really want to thank Steve Streeting <laughs> for showing how to do it because um, I, I, I rewrote some text effects that took a long time to figure out in a very short time by doing it with materials. Uh, I knew there had to be an easier way. Uh, thanks.